Hi, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks Certification Program in Education Services here at Juniper Networks. This next Learning Byte in our Class of Service Basics series covers queuing and scheduling. We start, as always, with our uh, kind of home page here, showing the typical cost stages as you move through a Junos device. Uh, you're welcome to pause this slide if you wish here. I'm not going to spend uh, any time. I'll move directly on to uh, the next slide for queuing and scheduling. When you think of class of service in a, in a fundamental way, you think of uh, the prioritization of, of traffic over other traffic and dropping traffic when the device gets congested and you know differentiating the treatment of, of packets as they move through the device and out onto the wire uh, downstream in the network. Well, well, that's really the function of scheduling here and using schedulers to provide that functionality. You can see an example here, a simple example in our diagram. We have three forwarding classes or queues in our device and at this point they get passed into the scheduler and based on the parameters of the scheduler and the way they have been configured, uh, the schedulers that is, uh, the data gets prioritized or dropped if necessary and it gets sent out onto the wire in, in some prioritized fashion based on uh, the parameters of the schedulers. So in terms of scheduling configuration there are really four parameters in play here. Uh, transmission rate is the bandwidth assigned to each queue. Priority is the relative importance of uh, one queue to another queue. Delay buffers, that's the amount of storage space when, uh, you know, when traffic fills up in a queue, uh, you can store it using delay buffers. And at some point, uh, you know, there just simply is too much traffic and you have to start to drop some inside the device, and that's called congestion management. So let's look at these in a bit more detail. The first is transmission rate. As we just said, it's the bandwidth assigned to a given queue. And you can assign bandwidth uh, as a function of bits per second, so a value. You can assign it as a percentage, or you can use something called a remainder, which is simply whatever's left uh, for the device or the queue that isn't assigned yet. Uh, you can see an example in the bottom right of a, a sample configuration. We're under the class of service stanza in the schedulers section, and we simply entered our transmit rate, and in this case we're using 50% as an example. Now, an obvious question uh, about cost is what happens when you exceed some of these parameters. Well, when you exceed your transmission rate, by default, uh, if there's available extra bandwidth on your, on your queue or on your interface, you get to use that extra space. You can borrow into the other queues, if you will. Uh, that's the default setting. Now, there are some other parameters you can set if you wish. Uh, you can uh, put a limit on your transmission rate, so it reaches, reaches a certain uh, limited configuration that you've used and it will not go any further, it will not expand further. And you can do that using the exact command. You would simply add it to the end of the uh, configuration example there. And then another example is a hard limit using the rate limit command. And that simply uh, puts a, well, literally a hard limit on the top of, of your configuration. So if you had one megabit per second as your transmission rate, uh, you hit one megabit per second with that queue, you don't buffer it, you don't keep it, you literally just drop it. So the next parameter is queue priority, the relative importance of one queue to another. Uh, what you're defining here is when uh, traffic or packets in a given queue will get sent out on, sent out on the interface. Uh, you know, if you are a high priority queue, your traffic will, will get sent out before a low priority queue. Uh, it works, you know, as you would imagine. You can see the priority options there um, from low up through strict high, and a higher priority queue will get better treatment in the simple front, you know, in the simple fact that uh, you know when when a packet arrives in a higher priority queue it will get sent out first so delay buffers uh, when a queue starts to get congested we decide if we're going to allow some storage space to hold those packets in hopes that we will still be able to send them out it will just take a, a small amount of time to to hold them in and delay them before they they get um, uh, sent out on the wire so in general, you know, a larger buffer space uh, equals more packets can be stored in that pack in in that in that buffer, and uh, we also induce higher latency for the queue as we wait a longer period of time uh, before sending those packets out on the wire, and that's actually a balancing act. You need to make a decision for each queue. Uh, you know, some some queues 
can afford to have a higher latency, maybe simple web traffic, for example. Uh, you can afford to store them. You don't want to lose them, so you store them, and you still hope to get them out on the wire uh, you know, after a bit of uh, storage time and latency. Other queues, you know, uh, a VoIP queue, for example, carrying VoIP traffic. Well, after a certain point, that, that traffic is useless. You, you can't recover from a certain amount of latency, so perhaps you use a very small delay buffer for those queues. For assigning buffer space, you can uh, use a percentage of the available amount. You can specify a time in microseconds, or again, you can use that remainder parameter. You can see in our example in the bottom right corner, we've added the buffer size uh, parameter, and in this case, an example of 20%. Now again, what happens when we exceed our buffer space? Well, a couple of options are available. The first is by default, it just allows you to expand and borrow from other buffer space, from other queues, if there's some available. Or you can specify a hard limit, and it's using the temporal command. Uh, you know, we set a, a parameter for this queue, an amount of buffer space, and as soon as you exceed it when using the temporal command, you start to drop traffic. It's as simple as that. You don't expand any further. Now, the amount of buffer size available varies depending on the hardware you're using. The total uh, buffer space available for a, an interface can be from 50 to 200 milliseconds, and so you'll need to check your product documentation to see how much space you have to work with in your case. So the last parameter here, congestion management. When things do get congested and buffers do fill up, we need to decide you know, how much and what kind of traffic should we start dropping when congestion occurs. And you can prioritize what kind of traffic does get dropped or doesn't get dropped. Uh, you can also prioritize how quickly it starts to get dropped. You can have kind of a ramp up effect so it's not an all or nothing situation. Uh, in terms of configuration, we're talking about a drop profile here. So drop profiles really make use of two parameters. One is a fill level, and that is to say how full uh, are the queues and the buffers getting, and then the drop probability. So how likely am I to drop uh, traffic at each given level? And you'll see an example here in the bottom left corner. We have a, an example of a drop profile. It's configured on its own, as you can see there. And you can see uh, in this example multiple levels. And what we're saying is the following. When the fill level of a queue or a buffer gets to 30%, the drop prob probability is about 30% as well. So we've got, you know, as the, as the queue starts to get full, uh, we start to drop traffic. As the fill level gets to 60%, the drop probability in this case increases to 60 as well. When we get to 90%, the drop probability is 90. And of course, when we're 100% full, well, we're just dropping everything. There's just nowhere else to go. So this has kind of provided a staged sort of um, you know, approach to hopefully preemptively uh, starting to drop just a few packets, maybe to throttle back the TCP windowing of certain flows and start to hope to, to reduce the congestion and reduce the volume of data flowing through this device at this point in time. Now, the drop profile configuration there needs to be applied into our scheduler. So on the bottom right, you can see our scheduler and we've added the parameter that we need. It's called a drop profile map. And there are a couple of extra elements here. We can specify a loss priority of high or, or low, uh, something that might have been configured earlier on in the cost process. So you can be particular about the type of traffic that you're going to affect with this drop profile. Also, there's a protocol parameter there, and it's any in this case, but it allows you to select TCP traffic versus UDP traffic. So if you deemed one more or less important than the other, you could, you could be more harsh or more lenient with one or the other of them. And finally, you specify the drop profile parameter and call the profile as it is, and it's profile A in this case. So that's a lot of information, but let's start to put this all together. Here's an example of configuring scheduling uh, as a whole and applying it. And there are really three broad components. The first is to do what we've just been seeing, define the scheduler. So at the bottom, you can see our scheduler called A in this case. We've got our transmit rate, we've got a buffer size, we've got a priority, we've got a drop profile map, and the drop profile map refers to our drop profile up at the top there of our example. But back down at the bottom, you know, this is just one scheduler that you would apply really to one queue or forwarding class. And in practice, you would have multiple forwarding classes or queues on your device. So I've left a placeholder there. You know, you would add more schedulers to be specific to each queue and how you want to treat the differing queues to provide your, you know, differentiated quality of service. The next general step here is to collect the schedulers together and link them or map them to forwarding classes. And that's what a scheduler map does. 
So we have a scheduler map called sample map here, and you can see the first entry is put in there. So for the forwarding class best effort, we're going to use the scheduler A, which is the example down at the bottom. Uh, again, I've left a placeholder. You would continue to go forth uh, in, in a real network and specify the next forwarding class and link it to another scheduler, and the next forwarding class and link it to another scheduler, and so on, until you have your entire device and all of its forwarding classes or queues uh, with schedulers attached. And the third step is to apply this all, uh, you know, all of this work somewhere, and that's where the interfaces section comes in. We're still under class of service, but we've, uh, we've applied uh, a scheduler map, so all these collected parameters and linking of forwarding classes and schedulers, all of that is applied under our GE000 interface. Now one key thing to note here is you need to apply a scheduler map on an egress interface. Uh, it can be tempting to think of it as a, an ingress activity um, as you start to you know, deal with the incoming traffic, but in practice you actually apply this on the egress side of things, and so just be, be careful and remember to apply it there. That takes us to our demo. We're going to get onto our R6 device here. We're going to shoot some traffic through that router. We're going to configure some schedulers and apply them on the uh, egress side, the GE0012 side. And then we're going to use counters and show commands and, and monitor what's going on. All right, so we're into our lab environment here. Let me start by showing you uh, the pieces of, uh, of what we'll be working with here. So the first tab is our host that will be sending some traffic through the network. Uh, this second tab is that same host. I'm going to be sending a second stream at, at one point here. Our third tab is the R6 router, the router that we'll be dealing with in a configuration mode. And the last tab is the same router in operational mode. So let me show you a couple things on R6 first of all. And uh, the first thing to show you is that on our ingress interface, GE006, we have a filter, an input uh, or an ingress multi-field classifier in the form of a, fire, of a firewall filter. And uh, there is our MF classifier firewall filter. It's down in the firewall stanza. And you can see we're matching on uh, TCP traffic uh, on port 80, so HTTP traffic. And when we match that traffic, we're assigning that traffic to the forwarding class called BE data. So that's the first kind of portion of things that are, are set up here. Let me just get you down into the class of service section and show you a few more things. So, you know, this is going to be a really quite a simplified demo here. We're not going to get into massive uh, setups with multiple schedulers and, and I don't have massive, uh, you know, big traffic generators in this particular network. So we'll keep it very simple and just look at a couple of particular features uh, about the scheduling uh, components and, and controls. So the first thing to note here is that in our class of service section, there's a schedulers section, and I've only configured one scheduler called BE Data. It has a, a relatively low transmit rate of 500k and a buffer size space of 25% uh, of the buffer um, allocation for this interface and a priority of low. There's no drop profile configured here, just for simplicity. So we're going to use the default setting for, for drop profiles, which is when there isn't one, uh, you accept all the traffic and hold it in the buffer until the buffer is completely full. And then you simply start basically hard dropping that traffic. So there's no nuance in terms of random early detection or anything weighted or anything like that. So just straight up uh, accepting traffic until it's full and then we drop it. The next thing is our scheduler map. So we've got a scheduler map called test map, and because we only have one scheduler to work with, you can see we've assigned the forwarding class BE data and linked it to the scheduler called BE data. So our scheduler is linked to our forwarding class here. Again, in practice, you know, in a real network, you would have multiple schedulers and assign multiple schedulers to the forwarding classes and build a complete scheduler map there. And finally, we need to make use of our scheduler map, and so on our egress interface, in this case, GE0012, we are applying our scheduler map called test map. And so we're set up with our scheduler, our scheduler map, and our interface all configured together, and we're ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a bit of traffic here. So we're using our HPing utility, and this IP address down here is a destination address through R6 and into the network, so going through that router. We are on port 80 here, and we're sending 300 bytes of, of traffic within these packets. Um, so a chunk of data that's going to go through here. And the dash Q simply means it's going to run in quiet mode. So it will just sit here and, and run along for us. So let's start by checking out our uh, show interfaces Q command. On our egress interface, remember you monitor uh, queuing and scheduling on the egress side. 
And so what we see here is there's our traffic flow. We've got about 540 kilobits uh, per second of data going through here. And it's, uh, you know, everything looks normal. One thing to notice is that our, our numbers here exactly match. And in terms of the total counts as well, let me just do a quick refresh just to uh, see the latest and greatest. So queued means we're getting assigned into the queues at this rate and actually transmitted out onto the wire. It's matching exactly. So there's no latency here. Things are, are flowing through the device. There are no limitations of any kind. So with that said, let's uh, add a limitation here. I'm going to work with our uh, scheduler that we have here, and I'm going to add a setting called exact. And you can see it right there. And so using the exact switch is going to change the nature of the way this queue is working and the scheduler is working. Now, one of the things that uh, I didn't mention before, but is worth noting is that, see that our flow here is about 540K or so, but our scheduler allows only 500K. Now, what's happening is, remember, by default, we can expand beyond our own settings if there is extra space available by default, and that's what's happening here. However, with the exact switch we just implemented, that's gonna change just a little bit. What we're doing is we're putting a hard limit on our 500K, um, uh, our 500k transmit limit, our transmit rate limit. And so something has started to happen here. You can start to see that these numbers are a little bit different. The transmitted values are running just a touch behind the queued values. But notice that you're not seeing any drops. There's nothing being dropped yet. And so what's happening here is we have a hard limit on our uh, transmit rate at 500k. Our actual throughput is exceeding that. However, remember as well that we have some buffer space. So right now what we're doing is we're accepting the packets, they're going into the buffer, and so at any moment in time when we look at this real-time data, the number of transmitted packets is just a little bit less because some of them are still in the buffer and working their way out. But it's not so much that it's causing us a big problem at this point. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to our, our traffic server and I'm going to send a second flow of traffic into the network here this time with 1400 bytes of data per packet so a good full you know a full size packet here or full size you know traffic flow and so i'm going to do a uh, another look at our uh, our show interfaces queue command for our egress interface and all of a sudden what you should notice here is we've clearly exceeded the the um the transmit uh, the transmit rate limits that we have and we've also exceeded our buffer space let me refresh here so we are now dropping packets at a fairly, you know, a fairly notable rate. And so what we've seen here, we've seen, you know, some of the mechanisms that are available to you when, uh, when working with queuing and scheduling on Junos devices. All right. So, you know, cost is a, a huge topic and there, there's so much more to cover than we can cover in these learning bites. So a few pointers for you here. The first is to note that, uh, you know, cost uh, has some some particularities that are, are platform specific when you dig into some of the advanced details of cause. So you really want to check out the product documentation for your particular platform to make sure you understand uh, which particular detailed features are available in your situation. Uh, the next is Learning Bytes. You know, we're uh, a good ways through our Learning Bytes series uh, on cost basics here, uh, but there's another one to come on uh, remarking, so you'll want to check that out. Training, as always, Junos Routing Essentials contains one cost uh, introductory level cost chapter and the class of service course of course full two days uh, scheduling covers a full chapter on scheduling and another full chapter on hierarchical scheduling and really digs into some advanced details of the things we've been talking about here once again product documentation and finally uh, a free day one guide that I recommend you check out called deploying basic QoS so that takes us to the end of this learning bite hope you've enjoyed it and we will talk to you next time bye for now Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.